meeting will return to order. Um, if a member would like, oh yes, we have a clipboard. If you would like an attendance list, I believe, Madam Secretary. Yes. yes. So a sec a, an attendance list is being created and will be, be passed around. Yes. Just put your, just, you, you don't need to sign. In fact, signing is a bad idea. Print your name so, so the secretary can read it. All right. We have four items of new business. Westercon doesn't have the same sort of, of debate time limit mechanism that Worldcon does. However, we are allowed to set our own debate time limits. The chair would like to suggest that for items C1, 2, and 3, we adopt a time limit of eight minutes evenly divided between the two sides of the proposals. Is there any objection to doing so? Hearing none, each item has a debate time of uh, eight minutes to be evenly divided. I'm going to have to try and keep to be, be my own time. Item C1 is moved to amend section 1.4 of the Westercon bylaws by adding wording to clarify that membership <coughs> numbers are not considered confidential information and can be revealed by the convention committee. Uh, if you need full context, the whole bylaws are in your program book. This would add a sentence in section 1.4 that says, or sentences rather, uh, that membership numbers shall not be considered confidential information. Should a committee list the convention's members in their progress reports, program book, website, or other public settings, the members' membership numbers should be included, space permitting. There is alternative wording, should this meeting decide that they should be confidential information, we can get to that if there is desire to do so. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Mr. Van Ark as the maker of the motion. No, go ahead. You're the maker. Of the the maker of the motion gets to speak first to this proposal, and just as I get my timer right. I apologize. This is my first time speaking uh, for a motion. Uh, but this came up uh, because um, I was concerned leading up to the convention because site selection is primarily based off of a name paired with a membership number. And to prevent anyone from doing any wacky hijinks, it seems like you should be able to know who's a member. That's tradition. Therefore, you should not know what their membership numbers are until after site selection um, mail-in balloting has closed. Otherwise, if someone wanted to be devious and also had a lot of money to burn, they could start voting, casting votes for Benny Allo as member, member, whatever, um, just to invalidate someone else's vote. <laughs> because now, now we possibly have a spoiled ballot concern because someone has voted multiple times. And the site selection minister would have to figure out what to do on that. So, I don't, I don't have a strong preference either way, but I definitely would like some clarification in the judgment of this meeting to figure out whether they should or should not be revealed before mail-in balloting is complete. Thank you. Speech against? Uh, were you going to speak against? Well, I, just had a, I wanted a clarification. Uh, well, uh, go ahead. Okay. Mr. Bloom. I'll come up. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. We tend, at Westercons and Worldcons, to try to over-specify what we need to do. And this is, in general, a philosophically bad idea because then we have more things to argue about when things don't work perfectly. If we say, well, you know, they really shouldn't have done that, but it isn't precisely forbidden, we get along with it. And I, therefore, I don't think we should be including this much detail in the bylaws. And specifically on site selection, it's the member's signature on the site selection ballot that you use to differentiate whether, uh, whether they're the appropriate person to have cast that ballot. And if there's a question, well, it's the same way you resolve any other ballot question. The site selection administrator makes a decision, and uh, we usually live with it because there's no real opportunity to appeal. So I really don't think this is necessary, and I will oppose it, uh, mostly because it's not necessary. Speech in favor. Oh, I looked away. Do you know who's speaking? <laughs> 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 so, ben stood first. Okay. Mr. Yellow. Uh, move previous question. Second. So, that is a motion to close debate. Is there, uh, before I put the motion to close debate, a show of hands, how many people wish to speak either for or against this motion? Just show your hand. I'm kind of neutral. That, I just make a you, you, uh, yeah, okay, that answers that question. A two-thirds two vote being necessary to close debate. All those in favor of closing debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to closing debate, hands down. There being more than two-thirds in the affirmative, debate is closed. The motion is carried. Debate is, in our, debate is closed. The motion is on the floor to be voted upon. Is there any objection to me proceeding to a vote without rereading the question? 
Thank you. The question is on the initial adoption, remembering that anything adopted here must go to next year's WesterCon for ratification. The question is on the uh, initial adoption of item C.1, membership numbers. All those in favor of adopting this, raise your hands. Oh. Uh, uh, sorry? Which wording? The, the parliamentary the parliamentary 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 hands down, please. It is a parliamentary, parliamentary inquiry. Yes. The motion before the floor is the base motion. Nobody actually moved to amend oh. it. Nobody moved to amend it, and therefore, the, the other, the, that was a potential amendment that someone could have moved. Thank you. Let's go back to this again. The, the question on the floor is the adoption of item C.1 membership numbers as written in the section at the very top here. All those in favor of adopting this proposal, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, in the opinion of the chair, the negative has it. The negative has it, and this motion is defeated. 